uh, these are the three possible outputs which can come from back in a box uh, which will uh, which can quickly allow any back network participants to quickly become backend enabled and you know and and uh, become ready for launch so that's that's back in a box yeah, I think, uh, yes yeah, i think yeah, what is, i think the reason we thought back in a box would be interesting is uh, it we are already noticing there are software application as a service providers who are building in plug and play back in a box solution that any commerce platform either on the buyer side or the seller side can kind of you know subscribe to and integrate so that they can be enabled to do business on an open network quickly uh, vis a vis they trying to learn from the protocol from the first principles uh, like attending these sessions and starting to implement the right from the basic api details upward they can just do a plug and play model uh, uh, back in a box is a plug and play to a mobility system already in place back in a box plug and play to a payment system or a or a post system that is already in place to a chat application that is already in place uh, to a virtual assistant that is already in place or to any other e-commerce aggregator system that is already in place instead of the developer team of that company trying to build everything from scratch uh, there are providers who are trying to build back in a box solution and offer that as a service foundation is to just for the purpose of demonstration and not to offer that as a formal service we are also kind of building a back in a box for both the bap and bpp as an open source solution and put it out there for anybody who wants to use it and build from there or kind of uh, make others also see and build something similar and and uh, in commercialize their side of the solution with more features more things built in uh we are trying to put a demonstrator back in a box open source solution out there so that if any of you want to get started just give us some more time we should have some some versions of back in a box in bap and bap in this quarter and uh, you can start in using that to integrate the only challenge is as a foundation we are not in a position to offer too much of support uh, we will put some documentation and everything the foundation is not intended to be a software support or a software service provider in any way this is just a demonstration app with source code uh, request is that you will find your developer teams or a vendor who can take the source code and build something specialized for you and offer that as a with a maintenance and support arrangement but the idea is to just demonstrate that it is possible and this back in a box or B, uh, bpp in a box or a, or a bap in a box both of them are sector agnostic which means the open source version allows you to build a mobility bap or a mobility bpp on it a delivery bap or a delivery bpp on it a retail bap or retail bpp on it or a hospitality or a travel bap and a travel bpp on it it allows for that configuration ravi please correct me if i'm wrong it allows for that which could mean that the, even the user experience at that at the level 3 also allows for that configuration which is kind of little tricky when it comes to user experience you may have your own views around how you want to build your user experiences for your respective you know users but this open source gives you some kind of a framework to start thinking around that and accelerate your development work so that you can be back in enabled quickly and join the network very quickly so that's that's the reason why we thought it will be useful to put it out there for you to visualize the possibility and to also accelerate your engineering efforts without having to learn from the first principles of the specs and the api yeah over to you thanks thanks sujit thanks for that elaboration uh great so let's uh, move on so that this is basically you know what you get as an output uh, uh from back in a box now there are a couple just a couple very small topics which i want to discuss i think we are ne very nearly near the end of the uh, session today i want to reserve a lot more time for q and a uh, given that i'm sure that there are a lot of questions uh, based on what you have seen as of now so quickly going through the next uh, a few sec sections this is more about uh, about the contributions and the governance around the specifications itself so uh, how how is does the specification basically evolve right now the specification is basically hosted on github okay now there are various ways to contribute to the specification one can always uh, given that the the specifications are currently under ccb by nd license 
uh, the spacing doesn't allow sort of forking and you know sort of you know creating uh, creating a separate specification on its own as of now uh, the specification allows contributions to uh, be submitted in the form of you know github pull requests it can also be in the form of you know uh, raising github issues which can always you know result in a pull request later on or it could also be in the form of you know uh, an rfc submitted to sort of comments at backend.org it basically uh, you know takes uh, takes each and every aspect of the specification and creates uh, an rfc sort of a document so at backend we call them csf which is commentable spec files uh, to actually uh, uh, to actually note the uh, to actually log the evolution of the specification in the form of various uh, drafts those drafts basically gets published at an uh, you know at, at uh, in in the backend web cycle it will sort of be uh, it's it's actually undergoing the our developer website is actually undergoing a revamp so where all of these drafts will be accessible to every user uh, and 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 those users will be able to you know create more drafts out of them and actually submit them as a, 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 an a, as an rfc uh, to the network so that it can one it it could probably be you know merged with a specification at some point uh, at some point in the future depending upon the various uh, compliance checks in terms of you know interoperability in terms of you know uh, in terms of privacy in terms of data protection etc there will be a lot of policies around uh, around that basically i mean not not privacy and data protection that's more of a network level policy but at the specification level whether it is interoperable whether it actually uh, you know, whether it is backward compatible with existing implementations, uh, whether it uh, whether that tiny change might result in a lot of uh, you know re, uh, sort of migration uh, uh, you know migration efforts by all the all the participants who have already you know implemented the specification. There will be basically a, there's a set of uh, checks which have to be made based on which you know there would be. Uh, there would uh, the specification will actually get updated and as and when it gets updated the uh, you know all the network participants receive will receive a communication saying the specification has been updated uh, one can they can either choose to migrate to the new specification or they can always choose to remain with an older specification that is that's uh, begin the foundation actually has absolutely no uh, new uh, no mandates on that uh, people are free to use whatever version of specifications they want as long as you know interoperability is maintained across uh, across networks uh, if 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 upgrading to a newer version actually uh, you know results in you becoming more interoperable it can actually be taken at uh, taken at a that decision can be taken at a network level where all the participants say okay fine i think we have implemented this specification but looks like there is a new version out but it allows us to integrate with you know uh, a lot more domains or a lot more regions across uh, uh, across a particular you know geospatial uh, you know area so uh, those uh, those sort of decisions can be made at the network level to actually decide which version of the specification to go to but otherwise the specification itself has a parallel evolution which you know which uh, which keeps on happening at uh, you know via these pull requests and comments and you know issues which have been raised on github so the github repository is a single source of truth for all specifications and anybody who wants to go through uh go through the specification can always uh refer to the github if they want uh, the specification in a more readable format they can always copy the raw github content and paste it on a on an on, on, on an api documentation console like you know maybe swagger hub or docly or anything where they can simply paste it and actually you know go through the specification in a more you know uh, smoother manner so those th those are the ways you can one can contribute to the specification now as i had mentioned that the there is a core specification and there is a domain level uh, they domain specific instances of the core specification correct which means that those specifications have domain specific taxonomies layered on top of the core specification itself right to manage those specifications and 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 just just as an fyi even those specifications have been some of them have been hosted on on the on the backend uh, github uh, uh, backend github repos uh, uh, get github account itself and uh, uh, right now the logistics and the uh, the logistics and the registry infrastructure specifications are currently online uh, the mobility and the local retail and the final delivery are currently present inside the core specification but they are going to be shortly moved outside as independent domain specific instances of the specification 
So to manage those specifications, there are various working groups which are uh, which are uh, currently uh, you know active to you know manage any comments to any domain specific implementation. So those working groups are part of various uh, communities, but they don't necessarily uh, they are not always uh, specific to a particular network. Uh, those uh, working groups basically manage all the domain specific contributions made to a particular domain specific repository of uh, of of the core itself as you can see there are there is a core working group which basically manages all submissions made to core and there's mobility working group logistics working group local retail working group healthcare working group infra working group there are there are a couple of more i think there's a network security working group as well and there's a food and beverage working group but i don't think it has that much activity as of now but if tomorrow, if somebody wants to create a, their own working group for a particular domain instance of the core specification, they are free to do so, unless they form, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, as long as they form a, a standard governance model around it, which does not violate any interoperability, any any licenses based on the core specifications. So that is the uh, uh, you know general governance around the specification. There are a lot more. Uh, uh, and those those governance uh, sort of uh, policies are actually used every time there is a PR uh, a PR submitted to that. These PRs have a particular expiry date, and those PRs will basically uh, and in those PRs, if if they require a particular discussion, there is a particular uh, day on which uh, every every working group catches up together and you know discusses any issues, any any updates regarding the specifications. Uh, right now, uh, 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 and and which which needs to be you know pushed in the next version of the spec. So so that's that's the general snapshot around the governance of the API uh, 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 of the API specifications. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So let me uh, move on to the next topic at hand, uh, which is certification and compliance. Right? This is the last topic over here. So uh, regarding serving as as I as I said. That there are lots of policies which are implemented, which are layered on top of the actual uh, core specification. Right? It sort of starts off at a bare bones API level compliance. Right? When whether you whether you uh, what whether you want to implement a certain set of APIs, for example, a network might come together and say, "We are only doing search, select, and then confirm. We are not doing anything else. Maybe it's not even relevant to them." For example, a teleconsultation network um, does not specifically require you know, a status update every time there is something happening or maybe a, uh, you know, a, uh, a cancellation. Like for example, teleconsultation, uh, a teleconsultation network can, uh, once the order is confirmed, all you get is a teleconsultation link in which you can talk to the doctor. Now, during the, while, while talking to the doctor, you cannot simply say, you know, I can, uh, I'm going to cancel my order or, you know, you, or I know there are no tracking, there is no, there's no specific tracking which is happening. 